Here at Equipping Godly Women, we are all about being all in in faith and growing in our relationship with God to be better Christian women every single day. Unfortunately, however, we all have people in our lives who don't prioritize faith the way that we would like, and as a result, often make decisions or behave in ways that affect us or others negatively. And when this happens, there comes a question of what should you do about it? Should you say something? Do you not say something? When can you tell the difference? And that's what I want to talk about today, because yes, there absolutely are times when people around you are making negative decisions, and you do need to say something. But then there's also a lot of times where it's really just best to keep your mouth shut. So today I want to talk about six questions to ask yourself so you can figure out which situation you are in and then the five options that you have for dealing with situations like these. So what I'm talking about today, I want to be very clear. I don't just mean like you are trying to grow in faith and your husband is trying to grow in faith and he's really trying. Um, and so you're wondering like how much you should encourage him or push him. I mean people who are making negative decisions where you can actually point out in their life, hey, they are doing this. It's bad. It's sinful. It's hurting people. Do I say something? For example, maybe your husband you found out recently is looking at pornography and you know it's bad and you know it hurts your marriage. Do you say something or do you let it go? Or if you have grown children who are walking away from the Lord and you see what they're doing and you know that they are making bad choices that are going to hurt them and their family, but you're not really sure where that line is. Do you say something or do you just let them live their lives? Or maybe it's a coworker who is a really annoying and on your last nerve and who says that they're a Christian but doesn't act like it. In situations like these, do you have a responsibility? Should you say something or should you just keep your mouth shut? So I'm gonna go over real fast six questions for you to ask yourself. All right, number one is what is your motivation? So this is where we have to start and we have to get really honest with ourselves. And this is honestly the one that's going to take you the longest because a lot of times we can think that our motivation is to help. Um, but honestly, it's not necessarily always what we think it is. So in addition to kind of taking some time, don't just ask yourself quickly, but take some time, pray through it. What is your motivation? Another way you might want to ask it is, what do you think will happen if the conversation goes the way you want it to? And what do you think will happen if the conversation doesn't go the way you want to? Or what would happen if you didn't say anything at all? And when you ask yourself questions like that, it kind of helps you get to the root of the issue a little bit more. What are you really hoping will happen out of this conversation? Are you genuinely talking to your husband because you are concerned about him and you want to help him um, as a good godly wife? Or is it really that you are annoyed by his behavior and that you really want to make things better for yourself? Not that there is necessarily anything wrong with that when you are in a marriage or a family or even in a friendship, you you know, have a somewhat of a right to be happy in that situation. It's not that happiness doesn't matter at all, but you want to be very clear with yourself about what your real motivation is. Are you just doing it out of purely selfish reasons and you're telling yourself, oh, well, it's sin, so I need to do something about this? Or are you actually doing it because you genuinely want to help them? So I would take some time to sit down and pray through and think about it. What will happen? What do you hope will happen? What do you think will happen if this conversation goes well? What do you think will happen if this conversation doesn't happen at all? And kind of play out the scenarios in your head. And as you are asking yourself these questions, you're kind of paying attention to your feelings. How do you feel one way or another? Why are you feeling this way? What do you really think will happen? Is that really a realistic thing? So just taking some time with yourself first and getting really honest about the situation, how it's affecting you and what you are hoping for out of this conversation. All right, number two, the second thing I want you to ask yourself is, is this person a Christian? And the reason that I want you to ask this is because as Christians, we have the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit absolutely helps us and strengthens us and allows us to do things 
that we wouldn't be able to do on our own. If the person that you have in your mind that you were thinking of is not a Christian, they don't have the help of the Holy Spirit. So it's one thing for you yourself to say, oh, I struggle with anger. Okay, God's going to help me not be so angry. But if this other person isn't a Christian at all, it is unfair to them and to you to expect them to behave like a Christian if they don't have the help of the Holy Spirit the way that a Christian would. So you need to stop and you need to think about what kind of angle. Not that you can't still talk to them um, because there are definitely times that both ways it doesn't... Um, rule them out of talking to them, but it's going to change the way that you approach them. If they are a Christian, you can come to them and you'll have some kind of base understanding of, you know, God has a way of life that is best for us and we want to live according to it. But if they're not a Christian at all, um, it's just going to change the way that you talk about things and it's going to have to change your expectations from the fact that they don't have the help of the Holy Spirit and they don't necessarily have all the same values and beliefs that you do. So you can't base your conversation on that. So that's just something that you really want to keep in mind. I see this a lot on social media when people are getting in comment sections and being crazy and, oh, well, how could they? They're horrible, terrible people. Well, if they're not Christian, you can't expect them to live according to Christian you know, the way that we do things. Um, it's just not fair. So definitely something to keep in mind before you have any kind of conversation. All right, number three, the third thing I want you to ask yourself is do you have any kind of authority in their life at all? And again, this doesn't necessarily rule out conversations if you don't, but it is really important before you begin this conversation to keep in mind how much actual authority you have over their life. For example, I am a mother, I have small children. I have a lot of authority over their life. I can tell them, hey, you need to do this, they need to listen to me. I'm their mother. I have the authority to do that. If I tell them, go pick up their shoes. If I tell them, speak kindly. I don't have to ask them to do these things. And I don't have to like have a nice, sweet conversation with them. I can tell them directly, hey, I'm your mom. I told you to do this. Go get it done. Like, let's do this. But I don't have that same authority over pretty much anybody else in my life. Um, the next person that I... I hate to say authority over, but that I have influence with would be my husband. I do have a lot of influence with him because he's my other half. We're mirrored. We decided together that we were going to join our lives together. And the things that he does have a huge impact on me and on our family. So I do have a lot of influence with him but I don't have authority over him. I can't tell him what to do. I can't say, hey, you need to stop doing this because I hate it. But I can, with my influence, say, hey, this is um, not working for our family. I don't have to put up with this, or I really need you to address this, or this is something that we need to work through. I can't command him to do anything, but I can come to him and say, hey, we need to figure something out here together. Um, and then every buddy else on your list is going to go down in influence. So your parents, um, they're your parents. You would have some influence over them or your sister-in-law or your brother-in-law or anybody else in your extended family. You would have some degree of influence in them um, with them where you could go to them and you could say, hey, this is what I see, but you cannot make them do anything. You can talk to them, but you can't make them. And then with friends, even less influence, um, depending on how close your friendships are and how close your family is. And then also with strangers and acquaintances, coworkers, um, even less influence. You can talk to them. You don't have the right or the ability to make them do really anything. Um, so just keeping that in mind, um, how much authority do you have over them? How close are you to them? If it is somebody that you're closer to, that's going to give you more responsibility in their life because you're right there with them. Um, if my husband were ever to do something terrible, you know, his mom could talk to him, his sister-in-law could talk to him, um, people could talk to him, but I'm the one who has the most influence in his life, so I'm going to have a lot more responsibility to be the one who's there beside him and helping him and talking through things, and the same he would with me. Um, whereas if it was someone who was just a coworker, I might talk to them um, if I thought I was the only one, you know, the best person around who could address this. Um, but if there was someone else that they were closer to that I knew would address it, then I would have less responsibility. So the more uh, you really only have authority over your children. Um, but the more influence and the closer you are to someone, the more important it is that you do speak up, 
Whereas the farther away you are from somebody, the less important it is because you're not the person in that role in their life. Number four, do you know the whole story? This kind of goes back to the amount of influence you have in them, but it's a little bit different. Do you know the whole story? It's one thing to go to a coworker and say, hey, I see this in your life, but maybe there's something going on in the background that you don't even know about. If you don't know the way that they were raised, if you don't know the things that they're dealing with, if you don't know what's going on in their families, you really aren't in a position to say, hey, I see this and you need to stop because you don't know what's going on. Whereas in someone in your immediate family with your husband, you would have a lot more ability because you know what's going on a lot more. So that's just something to keep in mind. Do you know the whole story? And before you jump to conclusions and say, oh, they're behaving this way, how could they? It's wrong. Even if it is a behavior that is wrong, what is going on in the background? It could even be that this is something that they have dealt with for years and years and years, and they've made so much progress, and they've come a long way, but you don't even know it. So for you to go to them and say, hey, you need to knock this off, well, maybe that's going to be totally discouraging and backfire, because what you don't know is they've already come so far, and they just need help to get the rest of the way there. So if you don't know their backstory, you really can't go to them and confront them and say, hey, you need to change. You need to figure out the backstory first and to get a better sense of what's going on. Number five, is it clearly sin? So there's a lot of things that people do that are sin. And then there's a lot of things that people do that are just simply annoying. And if something that somebody is doing is simply annoying and it's not really wrong, then maybe you don't necessarily need to confront them about it. You could speak to them if it's really driving you bonkers. Um, but maybe a lot of times you just need to let it go. If people have attitudes that are driving you crazy, um, if they're rude, if they're mean, if they're whatever, whatever they're doing that's really annoying, as much as you can, if it's not sinful, just let it go. You are not responsible for them. You are not in charge of making them perfect. You are responsible for yourself. So just kind of overlooking as much as you can. And then last of all, is there anything I need to take responsibility for? So in your situation, there might be something that they are doing that is wrong, but have you played any part in the situation? Usually it's not just one person who all by themselves as an island has done this terrible, horrible thing, although sometimes it is. Usually there are people around them who help feed into that or enable that or make um, the situation worse. So you want to ask yourself, is there anything that I have done that... I need to take responsibility for. And let me give you a few examples to clarify what I mean. For example, random examples. Say that your husband was out drinking all night long and he didn't come home as often as you wanted and he didn't help out with the kids as much as you wanted. Now, you could say that that is sinful, that he's out just drinking all night. And you could say, this hurts my family, I'm his wife, I need to talk to him. However, instead of going straight to him and saying, you need to knock it off, you need to stop, you're hurting our family, it's taking a step back and going through these questions. Okay, why do you want to talk to him? Is it really because you're interested in him or is it because you want more for yourself and your family? Again, that's not wrong, but let's be honest about how we're coming to this. Um, is he Christian? Because that's going to make a difference as well. Do you have authority in his life? Um, as the wife, you do have a lot of influence, but you cannot tell him what to do. Um, do you know the whole story? This is one where you're going to um, want to dive in a little deeper. Yes, you could go straight to him and say, you need to stop. But do you know the whole story? Is there a reason why he's behaving this way? Is there something going on with him? And that's where I would start is to have that conversation. What is going on? What is making you go out and do these things instead of being home? Why do you prefer to be out instead of being here with me and with our family? Is there something going on? And you might find out that, um, Things had started off really well, but you, random example, had been super critical lately. And every time he tried to help out with the kids, you said, no, your way is wrong and we have to do it my way. And you like just gotten really nitpicky about things. And maybe you had really awesome intentions. You were just trying to take care of your kids. But if you had gotten into a habit of getting really critical of every time he does something, well, that's something that would play into the scenario of him not wanting to be home very often doesn't take away his responsibility. He is ultimately an individual with free will who is responsible for his own actions. 
but you need to also take responsibility for any part you may have played in it so that when you go to him, you don't say, hey, you need to knock it off. You're you know, a terrible, horrible husband and father, which if the issue has been that you are critical, that's just going to make it worse because you're going to, that would be critical and you're just going to make things worse. But what you might do in this random example um, is you might go and say, hey, we really miss you. Or, you know, I really want to spend more time with you or, you know, to realize, oh, my gosh, I have been so critical. I've been so angry and nagging him all the time. You know, I am the one who started it. Ultimately, his responsibility for he for how he acts. But I have a lot of responsibility in here, too. So you might go to him and say, you know what? I realized I have you know, behaved this way. I am so sorry. I am going to not do this anymore. And maybe you don't even need to address him being gone all the time. If you are addressing yourself and apologizing to him, not that what he did isn't wrong as well, but you are responsible for you. So if you address your own stuff and you say, hey, I'm sorry, I haven't treated you appropriately, I have pushed you away, I have nagged you, I have done whatever, and I have made this home not a wonderful, safe place for you to come home to, and you apologize and you take ownership for him, um, him seeing you behave that way may be the motivation he needs to realize, okay, yeah, I have been behaving too, but now that you are apologizing to me, I feel more safe to open up to you and to work through this together. Um, and it's still going to take a while in a situation like that to work through things. But if you're coming at him to him in humility to say, hey, here's my part of the issue and owning your own self, um, that opens doors for him to do the same as well. Um, a different example. Let's talk about if you have grown children who are walking away from the Lord. So what is your motivation? In this situation, it might be that your motivation really is that they're your children and you love them and you want what's best for them. So, okay, perfect motivation there. Are they a Christian? Well, maybe they were at one time and they've fallen away. Okay, I'm making things up here for random examples. Um, do you have any authority in their life? Well, as the mother, once they are grown, you have some degree of authority because you are the mother. However, they are grown and gone. So you had your 18 years and after that, you really don't have the right as much to tell them what to do, but you do have a ton of influence because you are their mother. So do you know the whole story? Um, in situations like this, you might not. You might think that your one child has, you know, making terrible choices and you don't know what their spouse has brought into their marriage that has affected them or what situations that they've gone through in their life in just the few years that they've been out of your house. You don't know everything that's happened to them. Um, so you might not know the whole story of everything that is going on. And then you can also ask yourself, is it sin? And then is there anything that you need to take responsibility for? Maybe in your life, you have behaved in ways that have driven them away. Maybe you didn't set the best example. And I'm not trying to be really rude or, you know, blame people. Um, these are hypothetical examples, um, but just get really honest with yourself. Is there anything that you possibly could have done, not saying it's your fault? Is there anything part of it though, where you need to take responsibility and say, okay, maybe I didn't set the best example, or maybe I really blew up this one time, or maybe I've been behaving in a way that pushes you away. And whatever you, anything you've done that you want to take responsibility for, and then go talk to them and say, hey, let's talk about what's going on. And let's see, you know, are there other issues at play? And what have I done? And even asking them, you know, are there things that I am doing that are driving you crazy? You know, I want to know so that I cannot do them anymore so that we can have a better relationship with each other and you can make better choices going forward, however you want to phrase that. Um, so that's just a few examples of kind of how you would walk through those questions. But in your own scenario or situation, once you've walked through those six questions, you have five different options for what you can do with this information after you have asked yourself these questions. First option, you could confront them. So this is an option that you would possibly want to use if it is somebody that you are very close to. You either have authority over them if they're a child or you have a great deal of influence over their life um, as a husband or wife or as a very close, very close friend or family member. Somebody that you generally have a good relationship with, you're close to, um, somebody that you know the whole story, you know them really well, they've shared with you in the past or you've been there through the things that they have gone through so you can see with very much clarity exactly what they're doing, why they're doing it um, and what's going on and what they need to do going forward. 
all of us are human. We are not always honest with ourselves and we may not always see things that we are doing that are hurting us or others. So it is so helpful and so needed to have these people who are right alongside of us who will speak into our lives and say, hey, this is what you're doing. You need to realize that you need to knock it off. Um, so if you are somebody who is very close to them, you know the whole story. Maybe you've had very polite conversations in the past and nothing has changed um, and you're really worried about them and you know you have good motives, then you do have the option to go to them specifically, politely in love, but also very um, bluntly and to tell them, hey, this is what I see. I'm really concerned. You know, this, you know, what do we need to do going forward? Because I see this behavior in you and this is not good. So that's your first option um, is to confront them. Number two, the second thing you can do is to question them. This is an option that you would use if you're pretty sure you know what's going on, but you're not positive or you have a little bit less influence in their life. If you can see what they're doing, but you're not entirely sure why they're doing it, or you're not really as close to them, um, close enough to confront them, you could question them. So what this would look like is instead of going to them and telling them this is what you are doing, going to them and saying, okay, I see that this is happening in your life. I see that you're doing this and I'm wondering what's going on. Like, for example, I know that you go out drinking a lot. I'm wondering why you do that. Or I see that you don't treat your husband very well. Is there something that's going on in your marriage? Or I see that you're worrying all the time. Why do you think that is? Um, so it's a little confrontational, but not nearly as confrontational is actually confronting them. So you're being serious, you're saying, hey, there is something that we need to talk about, um, but you are not getting in their face. You're taking a step back and you're saying, hey, I might not know everything. There might be more that's going on. You know, just, you know, can you fill me in because I would love to help you. And again, you're doing it in love and you're doing it in respect, um, but you're asking to make sure that you have all of the information first and even just to plant the question in their head so that they can go deal with it because they're not accountable to you. They don't have to give you a report back to say, you know, this is what's going on, but just to kind of plant that question and say, hey, I'm concerned about this. This might be something that you wanna think about or talk to somebody about that can help you that is close to you. All right, third option. You might, if this is somebody who you are not as close to, you might just want to share your own personal experience. So this is one that I would recommend if you don't know them very well, you're not very close to them, you don't have a lot of influence in their life, you just don't have that good relationship, but you see something that really concerns you. You're not in a position to actually confront them or make them change. Um, you're not in a position to make anyone change, but you're not in that kind of position but you care enough that you want to say something. So what you could do if you're not very close to them is to share your own personal story. So you might just be talking in conversation and you might bring up, oh yeah, um, somehow bring it up into the conversation. Oh yeah, I used to a long time ago be this way. Or, oh, my husband and I used to struggle with whatever all the time. Or, oh, I used to really have a problem with this a long time ago. And then this is how I dealt with it or this is what I did. And usually if you are sharing stories with people, that is way less confrontational than talking about their own life and their own sin because you're not pointing the spotlight on them. You're not saying, look at what you're doing. You're just talking about your own self. You're saying, hey, I used to struggle with this and this is how I got through it and this is what helped. Um, just sharing in case that's helpful or interesting. And usually people don't have as much of a problem with stories um, because you're not putting it on them. You're not saying, hey, you need to go do this thing. You're just saying, hey, this is what I have been through in the past and this is what helped me. And then it's up to them if they want to take that or not, which is fine because you're not in the position of influence to be able to do that. And if you are talking about somebody like online that you don't know, absolutely do not go confront them. You don't know their whole story. You don't know anything. All that you can do is just to share for yourself. If you don't know them personally, you cannot confront them, you cannot question them, but you can share. Um, so that's what I would do there. Or I would do that in a situation where you are close to them, but you don't know the whole story. Um, so it's kind of like moving down the list. If you know them really, really well, and you know the situation and you're really close to them, confront them. If you're not quite that close or you're not sure you know the whole situation, but you know most of it, then question them. If you know you're not that close to them and you don't, you know the situation at all, 
than just share. Um, the next thing you can do, option number four, is you can change your own life to lessen the consequences on yourself. So what I mean by this is say that there's somebody in your life who their behavior is driving you bananas, but it's their behavior, it's their choice. Um, it's maybe it's not necessarily sinful. Maybe you're not close enough to them um, where you can say something or you've tried to like have polite conversations in the past and it hasn't helped. Or even if it's somebody that you are close to and you've had conversations and it hasn't helped, ultimately, unless they're your own children who are children, you don't have the authority in their life to tell them to change. So you can confront them if you're in a position to do that. You can question, you can share, but if none of those things are helping, you might get to the point where you just need to make changes in your own life because ultimately you're only responsible for you, but make changes in your own life so that you guys can get along better. So for example, if you, random example again, if you had grown children who were being very irresponsible and you were always cleaning up their messes, well, you can't make them be responsible but you can change how you react and you can stop cleaning up their messes so that they have to do it themselves. If you, there's somebody in your life that you're always covering for, you can't fix them, but you can fix you. If there's somebody in your life who's always angry and rude to them, you can't make them stop being angry and rude to you. They are their own person, but you can say, you know what? I don't have to listen to it. I can make my own choice to protect myself from that and I can take myself out of the situation or I can put some kind of barrier or boundaries in place that I can protect myself. I don't have any authority over somebody else, but I can put myself in a position. I can improve things in my life. I can make changes for my own life personally to lessen the consequences for myself. And however you do that is going to vary a lot depending on what kind of situation and what's going on. And you can share in the comments below if you want more advice about that. Um, but remember, you can't change them. You can confront them or share or question, but ultimately you can't change them, but you can change yourself and you can put boundaries and protection around yourself and change the way you behave. And then fifth and last of all, you could just do nothing. Now, if this is an issue that is going on, that is not really a serious issue, maybe it's not really sin, um, maybe you examined your motivation and you're like, okay, well, they probably should stop doing it, but really, I just think it's annoying and I want them to stop. Um, then maybe you just don't do anything. Every person has annoying quirks and habits. Nobody is perfect except Jesus. Um, we all are walking this journey out. We're all in different stages and we don't always get it right. We all have things that we are working on. So if there's somebody in your life who is still on the journey and still has things they are working on, no person can work on every single thing at the same time. Um, so a lot of the time, the good Christian thing to do is just to give them grace and just to you know, you do you and that's fine. And to not have to make a big deal out of it and just let them be. Um, they can do their thing. You can do your thing. Um, you're not responsible for them. In most cases, you are not their Holy Spirit. It is not your job to fix them. Um, your job is to live your own godly life and set a great godly example and share when is appropriate. And you can question when it's appropriate and you could even confront if you know them really well and you know the whole story and you know it's appropriate. Um, but a lot of the times, if it's somebody you don't know very well, you don't know the whole story, sometimes you just have to leave it be and know that we all have things that we are working on. And if you can't overlook it without much consequence, then just let it be. Um, but hopefully this has helped you. Obviously, I wish I could get into a lot more practical examples and situations because it's going to be so different depending on what your situation is. But hopefully as you go through these six questions, it will really give you more clarity over what the situation actually is and what your responsibility is and if you should do anything at all. And then the five different options, just choosing which option fits best for you. It kind of goes down a sliding scale of how much do you know them? How do you know their story? How close are you? And are you in a position in their life where you can say things? Or are you just in a place where you just 
let them be. Um, but hopefully this has been helpful for you today. If you have anything else you want to add, go ahead, leave a comment below and I will check them out. And I will also leave you some really great resources in the um, show notes below as always, so that if you want to dive into this issue even deeper and get more advice on the things that you are dealing with, I have tons of articles and can find you and write you more. Um, so go ahead, definitely check those out and leave me any comments for anything that you would like more information on. All right, bye.